Welcome to Groups. I'm so glad you're diving in and we're going to just kind of engage in the topic today after we deal with some lunch facts. Lunch fact today. I had bison chili, buffalo. Look very much like the, the beast from Beauty and the Beast making this picture of beauty. Beauty. Actually, I ate the beast. That's not how the story goes. That's a little dark. But, like, okay, I ate a buffalo. I feel bad now. They're American plain roaming creatures. If you've never seen one, try one. They're delicious. Don't believe me? Ask the dishes. <laughs> All right. Okay, we're jumping in. That was, that was smooth. That was better than I hoped it would go. I'm ready to jump in. All right, this week's topic, we are leaning into the book of Philemon. And as we lean in on this and discuss it this week, what we really look at is understanding we receive the grace of God and he forgives us not because of anything other than he loves us, not because of our merit we are forgiven and restored to God in Christ Jesus. And the calling to the believer, those who are in Christ, is to extend forgiveness back into the lives of those around us who have hurt us and done us wrong. So what we know is that in the story Beauty and the Beast, the the castle, the beast, um, all the inhabitants live under a curse. And the curse given to the beast affects everybody. The curse given to Adam in Genesis 3, 16 to 19, descends into all humanity and it becomes our nature. We're sinful by nature unless we receive the thing that breaks the curse. In the story of Beauty and the Beast, Belle comes, the beast loves her and she loves him. Love is given, love is received, the curse is broken. Lumiere becomes a, a little French like butler and the little French duster becomes a woman and they can now not be in a weird relationship. So you have that where the curse is broken and things are brought back to life. In the same way, when we receive Christ, those dead parts of our lives, those cursed parts of our lives are animated by the Holy Spirit and brought back to life for the purposes and the desires of our Heavenly Father in Christ Jesus. So we recognize the curse is broken over us in Christ, and then we are able to then extend grace and forgiveness to the world around us. As you go through these groups' questions, as we lean in today, I hope you're challenged to um, really reconcile the fact, am I in Christ? Have I not just heard it, but I've, have I received forgiveness in Christ? And if you're in a group tonight and you've never received Jesus Christ, I can pretty much guarantee your group would love to pray with you and help you walk into a relationship of forgiveness with Jesus Christ and new life in him. If you have received forgiveness in, in Christ and you're walking as a Christian, part of that is forgiveness. And we're going to lean in to some questions for you in groups. And this could be a little bit of a vulnerable night as we talk about what it means to forgive those who've wronged us. So get ready. Here we go. We're going to dive into questions. Kids first. Hey kids, really excited for you to jump in with us into the question, so here we go. Question number one. In his book, Paul is not writing to a church, he's writing to a per person. He typically does write to the churches, but in this, he writes to an individual, Philemon. Philemon had a slave that he owned named Onesimus, who left him and spent some time with Paul. And this is where our story picks up. Do me a favor and read from Philemon, verse 12 to 16. Kids, I would like to ask you a question. Knowing that forgiveness comes first and only through Jesus, I want to ask you if you've ever received him as your Lord and Savior. And if you haven't, you're in a room with friends and family and your small group family, and I would love for you guys to take a minute and answer the question. If you haven't received Jesus, tonight might be a wonderful opportunity to do so. And uh, your mom and dad can lead you in the sinner's prayer with the group there. And then um, if anybody, if any of the kids do accept Jesus, I would love for you parents to lay your hands on those kids and pray for them as they have experienced this step step into new life in Christ, uh, just pray over them and ask that, the, that their lives would be protected in Christ and spend some time together answering that question. Have you, kids, ever given your life to Christ?
Maybe you've already taken that step and accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, but there's new things that you're convicted of, and maybe it, you need to spend some time asking God to forgive you for other things you've done. Maybe you need to talk to your mom or your dad, your brother, sister, friends, and get things right. How can you commit this week to going about forgiving people who've maybe hurt you, who've done something wrong to you? And remember this, if someone's hurt you, it doesn't mean forgiving them lets them do it again, but it does set you free from them. So I invite you to think of ways and share ways that maybe you guys can hold each other accountable and commit to doing that this week. You don't have to hold on to that old shame. You don't have to, to be held by the curse of sin. So I'd like to invite you, share with one another how you're going to go about extending forgiveness this week. Hey adults, time for you guys to dive into your questions. Question number one, when has there been a time in your life where you have felt free? Question number two, what thing was confining you or holding you in slavery before you experienced freedom? Question number three, go ahead and read Philemon 8 and 9, and then kick the video back on it, and we'll get into the question. Have somebody read that out loud. I love this because Paul words it so well, doesn't he? He could say and kind of speak boldly and say, this, this is what Christ orders us to do. But he doesn't do that. He appeals to them on the basis of love. So let me ask you this question. Have you ever tried someone to tell someone to do something based on your own authority, something they didn't want to do? Have you ever used your authority to tell someone to do something? Talk about it in your group, those experiences you've had, kind of giving orders from a place of authority. Question number four, have you ever set your authority aside and gotten down with somebody and showed them how to do something step by step because you care about them? What was that like? Share with your group. Question number five, really basic, and it seems rhetorical, but I think it's important to hear it out loud in the room. Which one worked out better? Question number three or question number four? So there's a challenge in this week's group as you get ready to go, a challenge from us to you. And I say from us, from the content team, we really feel like this is a good week to challenge you forward in something. And the challenge is this. How can you appeal to people around you on the basis of love rather than authority, but appeal to them on the basis of love and connect with them in a way that Christ has maybe connected with you? How can you, in your everyday, ordinary life, appeal to people on the basis of love rather than authority and influence? Take some time, talk with one another, and maybe next week when you come back together, you can be accountable and kind of check in, see how that went. So I wanna close groups with this this week. Is there anybody in your groups who doesn't know Jesus? Is there anyone among your number right now who maybe is far from God? And if they are, the remedy is right there. That freedom to break the curse and let your life kind of come alive in Christ Jesus is right in front of you. And I would invite you, if you have not 
accepted Christ, your group would be thrilled to heaven to have the opportunity to pray with you and see you step into a new relationship with Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. So if you haven't done that before, please, I invite you, take some time with your group and share that and let them bless you and pray with you and let you receive Jesus Christ. Confess, you know, your sin, pray the sinner's prayer and be set free. If you don't know how to do this, and you're like, oh, we have somebody in our group who wants to um, wants to become a Christian and they don't know how, and you don't know how to lead them, I invite you. you. Most of us have a smartphone. You can literally open the Google browser and type in the sinner's prayer. It's right there, and you can just pray it and repeat right after it. And um, it's a beautiful thing to see someone come to know Jesus Christ and to confess their sin um, in that way. So if you have that in your group, please take a minute and um, share that wonderful opportunity of, is there anyone in the room who needs to know Jesus? Hey, groups, welcome to the group vine. Where'd you hear it? I heard it through the group vine. Uh, I don't know any more words to that song, but I did picture the California Raisins. I did too. Remember? That's yeah, amazing. I love that. Yeah. All right, so on to bigger topics. Um, we are excited. I'm excited to have Pastor Tom Grable come and share with you some things God's been doing in his life and in our church's life over the past number of weeks and uh, just kind of share maybe where God's helping him discern into what's next and what's going on in his world. So without further ado, I turn it over to the Reverend Thomas, middle name. Wayne. Wayne Graybill. Thank you, Padre. <laughs> so my role here at Foundry Church is transitioning. It's changing slightly as God has now called me to transition ministry in vacant churches where there isn't a pastor. I step in for a year time and help them make the adjustments to move from one point to hiring a new pastor. That'll occupy most of my time, but a second aspect of what God is calling me into is develop a counseling practice, become licensed as a uh, marriage and family therapist. And so I'm going to begin accumulating hours over time and um, with an agency right here in Holland called Alliance. So my role here at Foundry Church will continue on the counseling of those who at Foundry Church may need that. I'll continue to serve on the leadership board, but the rest of my functions that I'm currently figure, uh, carrying out will be handed off to other people. So Tom's role will no longer be full-time. It'll be um, an hourly basis with counseling, which is something we value highly in this church. And um, just incredibly blessed by Tom's friendship, his loyalty, and his um, kind of alongsidedness in my life. We have been friends now for um, about 21 years. We've known each other. We've worked together in ministry for a long time. It's, it's, been, it's painful because we had always wanted to work together. And it's, it's continuing on just differently. And um, so I think that's the thing that, um, yeah, there is some grief for, for us in and, and seeing that it's not full-time here at the Foundry, but there's clarity in God's calling. And I think it came about almost miraculously how God really pointed this out. And Tom is gifted and equipped to lead congregations through transition. So we celebrate that. And we celebrate that Tom is not done here. He's going to be counseling. And he's still on the board of directors here at the Foundry Church as an influential voice. He's been on the board since our inception. And so he won't be leaving from that role. And we're just very thankful to have Tom and Michelle as members of this church. You'll be worshiping members of this church um, when you are uh, not at the church you're working in transition with. So um, I just want to bless God and bless Tom and Michelle, especially Tom as he steps into a new role. Um, bless you, my friend. It's been really fun. And I'm excited for how it's going to work out next. And it's important to note that one of the final things Tom will experience on staff here is a violent beating in fantasy football by the old English women. <laughs> yeah, we play this week. It might happen. It might happen. But I'm hoping it doesn't. <laughs> yeah. I thought, that's not smack talk. Like, it's like, I'm hoping it doesn't. See why he's going to be a counselor? I'm going to take like, down the queen. Is yeah. that what gonna do? <laughs> I'm the queen? <laughs> Sorry, Elizabeth is one of the yeah. old English ladies. Uh, I think there's a threat against her ladyship. <laughs> that's what I want. I want to be called your ladyship during the fantasy. Because my football team is the old English women. So if you lose, you got beat by an old English woman, which I think is just... Awesome, because they're very frail and noble. Yeah. 
You're the foundry church. Foundry church of roosters. So if yeah. you get beat by me, you're attacked by a rooster. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I'm in Zealand for the chicks, so it's basically yeah. the father of the little fuzzy. Sure. Yeah, sure. awesome. So we'll update you on the score, but <laughs> the old English women for the win. I'm sorry that has to happen to you. <laughs> this has nice to end. To yeah, I just, I, I don't know. I need a pithy British comeback, you know, as if by you or something. I don't know. What What do they say? Huh? You're a woman. You're I'm a woman. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I am. Yeah. We're, we're, yeah, just be we're, speechless. We're different. Right. <laughs> Beat him soundly, Theodore. <laughs> That's the end. <laughs> Thrash him about in his worthless carcass. All right. He's not worth this. I love Tom. Oh, I super spit there. All right. Thank you, Foundry Goofs. And I'm very sorry for what has to happen to you this weekend. We're out. Oh, old English women. You have to do the comb for roosters. <laughs> oh. I, Eric the Illusionist, summon from the sands of time, one of ginger hair and power, live, live. It's not as good as I hoped. Look, we have a real illusionist coming. It's awesome. His name's Ian. The guy is amazing. We actually, Erica and I, the whole staff, we got to have a dinner with him. And he does different tricks and stuff. It's great. We had so much fun. And it was like, it was mind-boggling, right? So it was like, because he, I don't know how he did it. He was awesome. But he's an illusionist. It's not witchcraft. Don't worry about it. It is fun. It is a lot of fun. And he explains what he's doing at the end. And he also gives part of his testimony, so it's a really cool thing. The guy's a youth pastor, which I know some people are like, well, then he's definitely a witch, but that's not true. I was a youth pastor, so was Tom. We're awesome. Um, but Ian's a great guy, and I would love to invite you. Sign up for this meal, uh, either the popcorn or the um, dinner. We call it dinner in West Michigan. It's just dinner. Yeah, oh yeah, that's a good idea. Sign up as a group, and you guys can all come and have a table and have a great night. I promise you, you will have super much fun. That is not good English. You'll have so much. I'm the old English women. Come and enjoy thyself. Tremendous fun. Hither and yon. Jolly good. Jolly good. With tea and biscuits. Actually, there will be biscuits because it's a southern feast in the bayou. Oh, no, it's cornbread. But either way, it's going to be a great night. Illusions, fun. And if you bring your group, then you're at a table with friends, and you're really going to enjoy yourself. So sign up for it, and all proceeds go towards the youth mission trip this summer. And guess where they're going? They're going to do some ministry on the bayou. Oh, I think that should be the name of it. Brittany probably won't let me name it, even still. Magic on the Bayou, November 22nd. Sign up as a group. We'd love to see you come and be a part of this. I don't know what else I can say about this event, but it's it's going to be magical. It's going to be such a good time. You need to stop. So, it's been I, like 30 minutes. I like announcing the magic show. What are you doing? Where am I? It's dark. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs>